We're here with Adam Rothwell, who is the Director of Intelligent Giving. Adam, tell us about your research into face-to-face -face fundraising today. Why did you undertake it and what did you find? Well, we did the research because we thought it was a subject that was really interesting to a lot of people. Uh, just anecdotally, we get a lot of interest on our site whenever we mention face-to-face. -face. We, uh, when, we, when, when I go out and talk to people, fundraisers, it's the thing they're always most concerned about. When I go and talk to people, I know my friends, just something as simple as that. It's what everyone wants to talk about. Um, and so we just wanted to test, was there any truth to the poor reputation that, 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 that chuggers have? Um, and you know, it's no, it's no, it's no big surprise, I'm sure, to, to many of many people watching this that uh, we've, we've got some, we've had problems with chuggers for a long time, just in principle, just in the fact that uh, we think it's uh, you know generally uh, you know a bit rude to go up to people in the street and ask them for money. But that's not very substantive. And you know, a lot of commenters on our blog have said things like, "You say this stuff, back it up with some evidence." So um, that's what we've done. We thought, right, excellent point. We're going to do it, and so we did it. Brilliant. And what did you find? We found, um, well, a lot of surprising stuff, actually. But to be honest, I had expected, I suppose, the survey to show that chuggers were uh, generally um, uh, a bit rude, generally um, you know, didn't let you go, um, and you know were, were not polite. And that survey didn't show that. Most of the chuggers we interviewed were actually quite polite. Sizable minorities of 16 out of 50 refused to terminate politely and on request, which, of course, is what the code says they have to do. Uh, which was, of course, disappointing. Um, but I was most surprised, um, well, apart from the fact that a lot of, most of them were polite, by the, the total abject lack of um, uh, abiding by the law, um, giving disclosure statements. Now, the Institute is very clear on what a proper disclosure statement looks like. Uh, the Office of the Third Sector is quite clear. The law has been in force since the 1st of April. We would have thought it's fairly clear what you need to do. But so many chuggers didn't do that. Some of them got out a sheet of paper from the PFRA and said, uh, here's something like a disclosure statement, but don't read it, it's too boring, didn't give us a chance to read it. And some of them, uh, only very few, just lied, barefacedly said, we're volunteers. Um, and uh, although that was only a small number, it's outrageous, I think, that any charity, anyone on the street, who would even think about lying uh, about their cause. Did you expect to find such damaging practices? Well, like, like I said, I, I expected the results to be uh, to, to show kind of bad behaviour, but in a different way. So this was this was a surprise. We certainly didn't have a high, didn't have a you know a crusade against truckers. And Mick Aldrich says I'm on a crusade. Well, you know that that's really not true because the results were very different to what I had suspected. And if they were carried out, uh, the, the result you know we did carry this thing out quite scientifically. And you can go and check check it all on our, on our website if you want to. So um, yeah. It was different to what we expected. So, if the results were so damaging and so mm. negative, um, why did you decide to go public with your article? Why did you not present the findings first to charities and the agencies involved? Well, because from our experience, going and trying to persuade people to do stuff differently, very often in the sector, with something very controversial like this, doesn't work. Going and making a fuss about it, I'm afraid to say, although it upsets some people, is effective. A couple of years ago, we did something similar. We were very, very, very uh, outspoken in the media about children in need and about its terrible slogan about every penny you give goes to the courts. What happened? They ditched the slogan, they changed their logo, Terry Wogan stops talking such nonsense. And I think, I, I hope that we're going to achieve something similar in this context as well. Because as I said, we've been going on about how uh, there are problems in chugging for, 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 for ages, for a really long time, and no one, no, one, no one listens. We just get people from, you know, people like Mick Aldridge saying, well, you know, it's, people don't care about it that much, surveys show this, surveys show that. Um, and I think, you know, actually, firstly, uh, you know, those surveys are generally quite flawed, but more to the point, um, we haven't really got much engagement, no one's really paid much attention, so this was kind of the, the only option we had, I think, in a way. I think one of the most controversial elements of your report findings was that mm. you recommended that the public mm. stop mm. giving via yeah. face to face. Given that face to face has generated such yeah. large sums of money, regular income for charities, yeah. and recruited new supporters, mm. do you think it was responsible to ask the public to stop giving by this way? Um, yes, and I think you know it's actually uh, not news that we've asked people not to give to chuggers. We've had an article on our website that was up until last week for two years saying do not give street fundraisers because 
uh, when you give, they are on performance related pay, that means, a lot of the time they're on performance related pay, that means uh, there's quite a high overhead in signing you up. Uh, it's much more effective if you just go and give online instead. That's nothing new that we've said, and uh, it, it was just picked up on by, by The Guardian and by other media outlets, I think, as, as, as a kind of interesting point. But it's, we've been saying it for ages, that's not new at all. Okay. You've been described as a charity watchdog in the press, including in today's Guardian. Yeah. Do you see yourself, do you see intelligent giving as being a charity watchdog? Not primarily. Uh, primarily, we're an organisation which gives advice to people on how to give effectively. You know, we tell people to use gift aid and <laughs> that kind of thing, that, that sort of really mundane level. And we give recommendations of, of charities of which we support. You know, we, we have profiles of the biggest 500 charities on the website. We spend 80, 90% of our time doing that. Uh, we do a bit of watchdoggy stuff like this, uh, and it's easy for the media to, 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 to say that we're a watchdog because uh, it's understandable, but it's not what we are primarily. Fine. Okay. So, having come across all this um, bad practice, do you have any recommendations as to what charities and agencies can do better? Yeah. Charities need to get on to their agencies and tell them that they are not happy with this and they're not going to put up with it. And I think it's really down to charities on this because agencies respond to the terms that charities set them when they're fundraising, um, and uh, and chuggers respond to the to the to the pressures that they're put on by agencies. Now we we've come in for a bit of flack already because we from, from agencies because we're not revealing the names of anybody who we uh, who, who who approached us and who behaved inappropriately. And that's that's because we think that when people behave inappropriately, very often that's because they're a lot of pressure because if they don't sign up enough people they're going to get sacked very often um, and so we think you know it's charities it's really down to them though to, to demand better to demand more ethical behavior okay one other question does the public really care about this issue yes we know there are outspoken critics of it mm -hmm. and we saw heaps of them fight in mm -hmm. to comment on the guardian's article mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. but does the public really care given that the public seems to keep on giving by this method well i can't tell you definitively whether the public cares or not. I haven't done a survey that gives that tells you the answer on this. I don't pretend like like the PFRA seems to suggest uh, that people either care or don't care. Um, what I can say though is that, as as you mentioned, uh, we've had the article on the Guardian website. It's got loads of comments. Very busy poll. Eighty percent of people last time I checked say they're going to boycott chuggers uh, because they're so annoyed by them. Um, and you know, there's been a lot of uh, you know a lot of interest in this uh, from people sort of radio phone-ins up and down up and down the country as well. Um, so maybe the population as a whole does or doesn't care, I don't know. But a lot of people are interested and are responding to our survey and are coming to visit our website and are contributing to comments in the media as a result. I, I think that's, that's as conclusive as I can be at the moment. Okay, thank you. So where can we find out more about the research results? Well, you can find out more on our website, which is intelligentgiving.com. There's a link on the homepage there to our survey. So, and we've got a write-up of the results. We've got an in-depth exploration of the results, giving numbers. And we have a record of every single conversation we had with each of the 50 chuggers. So if you think we're massaging the statistics, uh, go and have a look at the spreadsheet. And every little tiny bit of evidence is there. Adam Rothwell, thank you very much. Thanks.